Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today, just as the thumbnail suggests, another large bank is buying into Bitcoin. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna buy uh, enough of it and actually expose it to six and a half million people, which is their customer base. So we'll take a look at what's going on there, but that's not the uh, the whole story about the good news. So you know, some other things that are going on. Also, we're gonna talk about why I do not want you to buy I trust crypto IRA. I will ex explicitly say why that is. And then lastly, we'll take a look at uh, two pieces, which is Microsoft is getting into the metaverse. And then we're going to talk about an NFT called these nuts. So we'll take a look at all those things. But let's first take a look at what's going on into the market. So today is a great day. It's Wednesday. Everything is up, it seems like. And uh, it doesn't get much better than this. We got a market cap of almost 2.8 trillion. Bitcoin price is 628. Everything's bullish. We're using trade the chain for sentiment analysis just to see what uh, everybody's feeling out there as it crawls the interwebs and has a direct API integration and all that good stuff into uh, Twitter. But uh, look, Everything's uh, doing pretty well. A little sideways action in some places, but Ethereum, 2%, almost 40, uh, four, almost 4,700, excuse me. Binance coin uh, down a little bit, tether, nobody cares. And look at this. Solana slides into that number five space, just as a lot of people were actually predicting. And uh, this thing has been on a monstrous tear. It was, uh, you know, nothing in the beginning of the year. I think like $2.00. Uh, something like that, three bucks. And now it's $234.88 a piece. Then if we take a look at uh, the actual market cap, look at that. Uh, it's not far away from overtaking Tether. And the next uh, big spot will be the $93 billion for Binance Coin. But I mean, look, it leapfrobbed Cardano, uh, not too hard. Leapfrobbed actually everything. Uh, XRP, Cardano, and now here we are at number five. And I, and I don't see it slowing down. It'll probably jump over to Tether as people uh, stop uh, tethering up because they're not selling too much right now. And then, of course, the next big place would be Binance Coin. So can Solana hit that space? Probably just going to take a little bit more uh, integration and uh, may, maybe more some uh, more great news. But everybody seems to be buying it. I've been buying this dollar cost averaging. I actually stopped uh, not too long ago. But uh, look, uh, this is... Uh, uh, doing pretty well, and we'll see how it all goes. I know Cardano people want it to go up, like myself, but look, they're quiet. They're not really doing too much. That's probably where everything's being built, but uh, that's where we're at. So that is pretty much it. Oh, also, Avalanche, jeez, up 10%. Anything really good? Polygon up? Well, everything's just around here. So, yeah, uh, looks like we're going to have a, a pretty good November, just my two cents. So that's what we have as far as the market. What we should do just jump right in to the main story banks stopping themselves from getting blockbustered this is a real quick snippet uh because on this channel i think if you've come here and you're new first of all welcome to crypto uh not a bad time to get in this is uh quarter four uh in the uh, four-year cycle we've had two of them so far or excuse me uh three of them going on a third cycle and uh, you couldn't have picked a better time not investment advice, just an investment opinion. So when we talk about uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum in the top 10, you know, it's kind of, you're kind of static. You can probably see some pretty great gains over time, but uh, in, the, in the next uh, quarter, you might see uh, some pretty big gains on elsewhere. And we'll talk about it in a second, but this is what we have today. And this is just going to push Bitcoin higher where Bitcoin goes. So do the altcoins. So here's what we got. This is uh, Commonwealth Bank in Australia. And before I go on, I will just say this, Australia is on an absolute tear. Not only is is one of their they're the biggest bank in Australia saying we're going to allow Bitcoin people to purchase Bitcoin through our app, but they also just got off this high of uh, the top security regulator say it will approve Bitcoin ETFs and not just any Bitcoin ETF, a spot ETF. So that is coming to Australia, and uh, not only do they do that. Now the bank's like, you know what? We want a piece of that action, and here we go. So Australia's largest bank will probably allow its customers to buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin starting next year. So when people sort of talk to me about like, well, where's all this money going to come from? Because we, I mean, we're almost at three trillion dollars. Can we, can we get to five trillion? Can we get to seven trillion, eight trillion? It's going to come globally. And uh, this is just one example of you got uh, six point five million. Uh, people, which represent about a quarter of Australia's total population. I find that crazy that uh, a quarter of the population goes to one bank. But it is what it is. But the big thing, though, it is uh, it's unclear whether customers will be able to withdraw their Bitcoin to an external wall. And I will just say this. Uh, 
take the little wins as we get them. Uh, if they can just, you know, give this or uh, allow people to actually buy uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in their wallet, but they're saying, you know what, we'll let you custody it, but just right, not right now. PayPal is doing the same thing and they're going to roll out uh, custody as well. So uh, again, I think this is a, a pretty great news globally and Australia once again, uh, beats the living pants off uh, America for what they're doing. So let me just think about that in the comment section. And now we're going to go on to a little snippet I call Don't Buy iTrust. So iTrust, as you know, it's that uh, piece right there that's uh, in the upper left-hand corner. Tax-free crypto IRA 401k. I've had one for two years, but I'm telling you right now, do not buy iTrust. Do not buy iTrust until a certain time. So this is what we have. So there was an award uh, where they were given the best crypto investment platform. And I said, hey, this is a great achievement. Uh, congrats, I trust. And then also they're, they're rolling out a new program, which is if you sign up for iTrust, you used to just get uh, a month free with no fees, which was $29.99 a month, which allowed them to do all the um, different things that they had to do as far as paperwork and as far as custody and as far as everything they need to do legally to have a crypto IRA. That's what that fee was for. But there was also another fee of 1%, I think 1.5, I always get them confused, uh, of uh, to actually do the trading, but it was tax-free if you did a Roth IRA. So now they say, you know what? Instead of the 30 days free, we really want you to sign up. We're gonna give you $100 of Bitcoin as a sign-up bonus, and guess what? Those $30 or $29.99 uh, monthly fees are gone. They're not gonna exist, but they go away on November 15th. So I'm just gonna tell you this. If you are thinking about signing up for iTrust as far as a crypto IRA, you're in America, it's a big thing, and you don't wanna pay taxes on your crypto gains like Peter Thiel did uh, when he put his PayPal stock into a Roth IRA and now it's worth billions of dollars and he's like, hey, I don't have to pay any taxes. Same thing with the crypto IRA. If you want to look into that, first of all, uh, there's a link in the description, looks just like this. Also, we did a deep dive video, which explains everything I was just talking about. It looks just like this. Click here and you can sign up. But just so you know, those fees go away on November 14th. So I would, uh, it would behoove you to wait until November 15th so you can start to add to your crypto Roth IRA. And you can do a traditional or a SEP, whichever you want to do, uh, or a rollover for a 401k, uh, 401k, a 403b, if you're military, TSB. Uh, our thrift savings plan, TSP, excuse me. Uh, you can do all those things. Just talk to the guys over at iTrust. So again, sounds like a pretty great deal. They really want you to come in. Just don't do it <laughs> till, till the 14th. All right, uh, that's it for that. And now I just want to roll into the last two topics, which is Microsoft and the metaverse. You know, in the last couple of weeks, everybody's been really hot on the metaverse. I have to admit, even myself, didn't really see the big picture until good old Facebook says, hey, we're changing our name to Facebook to Meta. And now, guess who's joining the fray? Yeah, it's going to be uh, Microsoft and they're gonna own their own piece of the metaverse pie. So here is what is going on. So it says here, uh, the company, Microsoft, is adapting its signature software products to create a more corporate version of the metaverse. Geez, that sounds boring. Uh, that promises to let users live, work, and play with an interconnected virtual world. So I know when we talk about the metaverse, uh, people will say, well, which one's going to be like the winner? Just like, you know, for like smart contract, which is going to be like the big winner? Is it going to be Ethereum? Is it going to be... Uh, uh, Tezos, is it going to be Solana, is it going to be Cardano, is it going to be Avalanche? Which one's going to be the big winner? Because that's the big thing. In the metaverse, I don't see it working like that. I see it just being like this huge area. And just like you can visit other cities, like physical cities, you'll be able to visit other areas of the metaverse, which all exists online. So you can go to the Facebook version, uh, you know, meta, uh, but good luck because they're going to steal all your ID. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to go to the sandbox or maybe you want to go to Decentraland and uh, where everything is uh, autonomous and your anonymity is uh, remain safe because you use the uh, MetaMask wallet. Well, whatever you want to do. So like with this type of thing, uh, just remember that it's not a one size fits all. And I think there's different places to go. And even Microsoft is talking about it. But the big question is then, well, what's the play here? What do I invest into? Well, if you want to do it by proxy, you could probably invest into, into Microsoft, not investments. Uh, advice, just investment opinion. However, there's another way to go around that. And I think the bigger question is, is like, well, everybody's talking about the metaverse. 
what the heck is the metaverse? So I'm just going to show you their video of their version of the metaverse. But if you want to uh, just un kind of understand the like what the metaverse actually would look like, just watch Ready Player One. And I know some people are rolling their eyes like that's not, you know, exactly what the metaverse is going to be. No, it's probably not. Take a look back uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago when people started to talk about like everything that was going to be online, like the net with Sandra Bullock and things like that. Some was pretty accurate, but some was way off base. So if you kind of want to just kind of like feel about like what is it really? kind of looks like that everything is online you have your online identity you have your oculus or, or any kind of like uh, interface for uh, for vision and then also for uh, the, the feedback but uh, this is Microsoft's version of it so you can kind of get uh, a taste of uh, the corporate version and uh, just just watch this it's no longer just looking at a camera view of a factory floor you can be on the floor it's no longer just video conferencing with colleagues you can be with them in the same room. Mesh for Microsoft Teams will allow you to connect with presence and have a shared immersive experience directly in Teams. We've also created an incredible immersive space that's now seamlessly accessible directly through Teams. Something that I really like is how freely you can move around and have face-to-face -face conversations. That's exactly right. We've held more than 100 team gatherings in these immersive spaces where people can connect learn and collaborate because they're truly in the same place together. The solution has been a game changer for onboarding about 100,000 people a year. And like many organizations, onboarding has been remote for the past 18 months. So bringing our new hires into this immersive environment fosters immediate and deeper connections. It transcends physical boundaries and helps individuals experience a culture in a very personal way. Our new hires meet many more people and grow their professional network much faster. In IT, we're thrilled how easily we could unlock Mesh's capabilities through Teams. The integration with Microsoft 365 makes everything feel familiar. But on top of that, spatial audio makes everything sound just like it would in person. And I love seeing and hearing our colleagues collaborating and whiteboarding and using this space for productivity. Okay, first of all, two things. Uh, nobody has legs. That's uh, kind of creepy. And then uh, second of all, this is just the uh, watered down corporate version of the metaverse. Again, if you want to take a look at what it potentially look at, uh, take a look at the sandbox. Go to uh, Decentraland. I will uh, link those in the description and then uh, you can actually get a feel for what the metaverse could potentially be. But for me, the play itself is crypto and digital assets as well as um, digitalized uh, landmarks or digitalized real estate. So if you want to take a look at uh, different projects to really to do your own research on, if you go to coingecko.com and you click on categories right here by large movers, categories where it says new custom tabs right there. I know you can't see my mouse, unfortunately. You click on categories and if you scroll down roughly around uh, 20, number 20, 21, just click on metaverse and that'll pull up all the different type of crypto and digital asset products that you could potentially get into. Uh, and you can do all your research and take a look at that. Me, myself, and I, I have taken a, a big position in Decentraland, Sandbox, and EngineCoin I've had forever. Uh, actually, Decentraland I've had forever, and Sandbox I just got into. But uh, I think this is a very long play. Uh, it's one of those things where it could just explode in a year, or it could take three to five years. But regardless, imagine where you are now and imagine what it's going to be in the future. Just take a look five short years ago. What was the uh, price of Ethereum? Uh, what was the price of Solana? First of all, Solana didn't even exist back then. It was just about a year ago. So uh, if you take a look at those and see where it could go, could be pretty fantastic. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then we'll finish up with a little D's nuts. So first of all, I always talk about NFTs. And uh, I know this is a kind of a, it's a funny uh, meme inspired <laughs> NFT and uh, people say, well, that's not very professional. Look, you don't have to take yourself so seriously. All right, it's going to be okay. So, with this one, I found this because, first of all, I thought it was hilarious. And second of all, I have a certain criteria I try to look at. And one of those criteria, or three of them actually, is I take a look at the community. I want to see if it's at least above 1K. 10K is pretty good in danger, a little bit more than 25K. If you have a ton of bots in, in there, and we, I take a look at uh, Twitter and Discord and all those things. And uh, these nuts, actually, <laughs> just saying that's hilarious. Uh, 
that actually hits these these three points or this one point. Also, the utility is it as I have a launch pad rewards gamification and the floor price is it like super expensive already or are we just kind of getting in? So with this one, uh, just so you know, I will link this in the description below. This is the uh, link tree Discord, OpenSea, Rarity Tools, Discord. They have thousands already. Twitter, the same type of thing. Also on uh, OpenSea, you can take a look at the uh, project itself, and we see right here where it says as far as like when I have to think about utility, this is what I'm talking about. Everyone who holds these nuts will co-own a casino and arcade in the metaverse. Pretty interesting type of play. We'll see how that all works out. And then uh, also you'll also notice the floor price 0 0.08, not too bad. Items 10,000, owners are 3,900, and I can guarantee you if you go to any Discord location and are looking for a good laugh, you will find no better place than the ones that these nuts have. I can guarantee that. And that's what's going on. So look, uh, that is it for today. Uh, I want to just say, well, actually, before I, before I go on, I will just want to re remind everybody of uh, the big thing, which is this. And that is that uh, for NFTs, just know that 99 point something percent are going to go away. And it really is gambling. And for me, I just get into these little short positions or these little positions, and then we'll see how it all pans out. But again, I am mostly a holder. I'm not a big trader, but there's a, there's a sliver of that. And there's even a bigger sliver or a smaller sliver for gambling, which I think is what NFTs are. Now, where does the metaverse and uh, digitalized real estate fall? That's in the holding. I really do believe in that. I think it's going to be big. So that is my opinion. And again, just investment opinion, not investment advice. And that is it for today. So look, if you made it all the way in, I just want to say thanks. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, found some value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. And uh, that's all for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.